So as its name suggests, an automatic number plate recognition system, or ANPR system for short, is an automatic system that is able to recognize number plates of vehicles passing by using cameras. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at how something like that can work. An AMPR system consists of two parts. There is the hardware that it's using and the software. So the hardware is basically the cameras that you're using to capture the images of vehicles coming by. And then the software is a program that looks at those images and reads the number plates. And that's really the interesting part of this. What I've done is I've written a tiny little, very basic number plate recognizer myself, my own program, and we're gonna take a look at how that one works. So let's go over to the computer here and uh, get it started. So this right here is the source code for the program that I made. Uh, but today's video is not going to be a programming tutorial, so we're not gonna go into the details on how exactly this code works in this video. Uh, but I am going to put it online, so if you're interested in programming, you can have a look at this code yourself. If you don't know anything about programming, don't worry, because you'll be able to follow along with this video just fine. So in this folder right here, I have an input image. So this is the image that we're going to feed into our program, um, and hopefully it'll recognize the number plate. So you can see right here, it's an image of a car on a motorway. Um, and it's got a Dutch number plate because I'm from Holland so I've made this program to work with Dutch number plates and I'm also doing the testing with that uh, but if you apply a few modifications to the program uh, the same principle would work for you know other countries as well. What I've also done here is I've edited this image to have a fake uh, registration number on it because I'm not actually sure if it's illegal to have a real picture of someone's registration number in the video but you know I thought since we're zooming in so specifically on that number plate today I would use a fake number instead. So now we're going to run the program on this image and then hopefully it'll be able to find this number plate and display it to us as text. Now in order to do that, in order to find the number plate, the program is going to go through a whole bunch of different steps. And I've made the program in such a way that it pauses after every step that it takes so that we can see what it's done. All right, that's kind of for this video, but of course if you were making a program for use in the real world, it wouldn't pause. It would just go through the steps in, in one go. So we're just going to get rid of this for a second, and we're going to run the program. And it tells us image rescaled. So that's the first step that it takes. So this is basically just we take the image and we resize it to a standard size of 640 by 640 pixels. So as you can see it's created a copy of the image. It looks exactly the same uh, but this is exactly the, the size that we want. And this is basically just to make sure that whatever image we feed into this program it always ends up being the same size which is a lot easier to work with. So the next thing that the program is going to do is run a so-called edge detector over this image. So an edge detector is an operator that runs over an image and it finds places in the image with sharp changes in intensity, in other words, edges, right? So it runs over the entire image, it scans over the image, and whenever it encounters an edge, it marks that, in this case, with a black line. And that's gonna give us, and just run it for a second, just press enter, There you go, edges detected, as you can see. And that's going to give us kind of a cartoony version of the image. So now we've marked all the places where there is edges in the image. And that's important because, of course, the number plate that we're looking for also has edges around it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to look for horizontal edges in the image because the number plate has a very, very notable horizontal edge at the top. Right? That's a very distinct feature of a number plate. So we're going to find all of the horizontal edges in this image and see if they are a number plate. So what the program is going to do is it's going to go and search through this image. And when it encounters a horizontal edge, such as right here, you know, the roof of the car, now for all it knows that might be the top of a number plate. Um, so it has to check if this is the top of a number plate. So it's going to go into our normal image 
and it's going to go to the same location as this. Wait a minute, just open it in paint, right, because that's quite useful for this. Uh, right, so it's going to go to the position of this roof line in our normal image, and it's going to cut out a box the shape of a number plate, like so. And it's going to compare that, that region that it's just cut out, it's going to compare that to this template, this example image of a number plate that we have here. And that way it gets a score for how similar this part of the image is to a number plate. And therefore, if this part of the image is likely to be a number plate. And it's going to do that for all of the horizontal edges that it finds. So it's going to go and, well, you know, there might be, this is a horizontal edge as well, you know, this line here. So that's going to get a box too. Uh, but, you know, there might be a tiny horizontal edge in this wing mirror as well, so it's going to get a box. And this logo has a horizontal edge in it. Right? That's going to get detected too. Uh, this text has multiple horizontal edges, so it's going to produce a box like this and perhaps another box like this. And actually, that's going to happen here as well, because this edge is multiple pixels thick, so it's probably going to create multiple boxes, but that's not such a big deal. But eventually, of course, it's going to find this horizontal edge, which is actually part of the number plate. So it's going to draw a box like this. And that's obviously going to get a very good match to this template because it looks very similar. And of course, a template matching just means comparing each pixel of the image to each pixel of the example and seeing you know, how much difference there is. And that way it finds that this part of the image is the most similar part to this template. And therefore, that must be where the number plate is. And, you know, that is how it finds the number plate and isolates it. So let's see if that works, shall we? I'm just going to press enter again. Number plate isolated. And there you go. It's successfully isolated it, which is excellent news, right? Because that means we can go on, because we can now start and try and read what's actually on this number plate, because that's a pretty important step. Of course, why would, why would you even bother doing this if you can't actually read the characters? So before we can start trying to identify the characters, what we need to do first is apply a bit, a bit of processing to this to make it easier to read those characters. So now we're going to do three steps in one go. First of all, we're going to apply a tiny bit of extra contrast to the image. Then we're going to apply a little bit of blur of course, not too much blur, we're not going to blur out the text, right? Just a tiny bit to get rid of the noise. And then we do something called thresholding. So thresholding basically means turning it into a pure black and white image. So anything above a certain value gets made white, and everything below a certain value gets made completely black. That's why it's called thresholding, right? Because you have that threshold value. So let's just see what that does. Right, here we go. And it's produced this. So this is our thresholded um, number plate. So you can imagine this is quite, quite well readable by a computer. This is quite clear. And that's, of course, exactly what we need. But then, of course, the question becomes, how do we identify these characters? Well, what we do is we go into this. Actually, we don't do it, right? The program does it. The program goes into this folder. And this folder contains a whole bunch of images of the characters that we might find on a number plate. And then it's going to do template matching again. So just like what we did with the, the whole number plate, we're now going to do with the characters. So what it's going to do is, let's say there's just it's just found this R, okay, right here at the start. So it's going to go into this folder, and it's going to compare that R to this, and then to this, and then to this, and so on. And if all goes to plan, it should get the most similar to this image, right? This image should be the most similar one to this R right here. And that's how it knows this must be an R. It's a really simple technique. It's a really basic technique and um, certainly not the best, right? It has a few issues, but we can kind of get away with it here. And there are two main reasons for that, I think. First of all, this font is, is relatively easy to recognize using this method. This is a very clear font. Uh, we don't have letters that look very similar. 
Um, in fact, this font is specifically engineered to be well recognizable by a computer. So for instance, they've taken a zero and, and cut out a bit of it. Or sorry, they've taken the O and cut out a little bit of it to distinguish it from a zero. And they've got this uh, cut out in the R to distinguish it from the P, which has the cut out in a different place. So they've done all these little things to make this font very well recognizable by, by a computer. But another thing that helps is that we don't use nearly all of the characters because a Dutch number plate doesn't use all possible letters. So vowels aren't allowed except for the O, which is used on like lorry trailers. Uh, also, it doesn't use a Q, for example, because they determine the Q looks too much like the O or the zero. So because it doesn't use nearly all letters, uh, the character set is quite small and this very basic approach works relatively well. So if you're going to try and port this to a different um, a different country that uses more characters, this approach might start to become a lot less effective. But for me it works quite well. So we're just going to see if it works. Just press enter. And you know, surprise, surprise, it works, because I picked an example for this video that works. So the success rate is, is not that bad for a for a you know a program that's made from scratch like this for a, for a YouTube video it's about 70% accurate something like that it, it gets a, a, some characters wrong every now and then so you know it'll mistake a Z for a two or vice versa stuff like this uh, so it's not quite perfect it's good enough for it for this demo but if you were going to use this in the real world it wouldn't be acceptable right? you need a you need a higher success rate if you're actually going to deploy a system like this for anything serious. Another problem with this program is that it can't deal with number plates that are at some kind of weird angle or rotated relative to the camera because it detects the number plate based on the horizontal edge. So if the edge of the number plate is not quite horizontal because the angle is weird or it's rotated or something, then you're not going to be able to detect or the program is not going to be able to detect that number plate. And, you know, more sophisticated AMPR systems will be able to detect number plates at a, basically any angle relative to the camera. What you could do to make this program a bit better, or perhaps not really better at recognizing number plates, but a bit less likely to make mistakes or give incorrect results, is you can add in some extra checks to make sure that it's not producing nonsense. So, for instance, when we're detecting that number plate, right, let's just go to the image here. Now imagine that this image, because you know this image had a number plate, but imagine that it had no number plate at all on it. Um, maybe it didn't even have a car on it. Or maybe there was a number plate, but it, it was impossible to read because it was covered in dirt or snow or whatever. In that case, the program would still attempt to find the thing in the image that's most similar to a number plate, and it would pick that part and isolate it and continue with that because it's the best match. But what you could obviously do to make sure that it's not going to work on nonsense is you can add in an extra threshold value. So you're not just going to say, well, take the, be the best match of the image, but, you know, how good is the best match? Because it could be, you know, oh, this part of the image is, is the most similar to a number plate, but that might still not be that similar. It might still be quite bad, you know what I mean? So you can also add in a number and say, well, not only does it have to be the best part of the image that looks the most like a number plate, but it also has to look like a number plate to this, you know, by this much exactly. Otherwise, it's not going to be used. Same thing goes for recognizing the characters. If you're recognizing some, some character and you say, well, this is most likely to be a, a P, but it's not even that close. It's, you know, it's, it, of all the letters, it's most likely to be a P, but it's still not, not even close to being it. You can add in a number here as well. You can say, well, if, it's, if the closest match is still not that good, don't use it. Give, you know, give the user an error. Or print out a character that says, we didn't recognize this one. The final check that you could build in is you can check if the number plate or the registration number that you detected uh, matches the format that is used by whatever in whatever country you are. So, for instance, <laughs> actually, that's with my fake number plate, right? This fake number plate is impossible because it has seven characters. Dutch number plates have six characters. So you can check, you know, is the amount of characters that I detected, is that correct? 
or you can you can try and see well you know is a, a combination of a number and a letter in one group is that allowed spoiler alert no it isn't so you can check the formatting of the number plate you can see if the characters that you detected if that matches the formatting that it's supposed to be so if you've detected a two somewhere um, incorrectly because it should actually be a z you can say well um, we've detected a two but according to the formatting rules of number plates there can't be a two in this position because you, you, you can't have a number in this place. I, I don't know why, but, you know, it could be. Um, so you can say, well, because it can't be a number, we eliminate that it could be a 2, and the next best thing that matches is the Z. And then you can still get that character right by looking at the formatting rules of that registration number. So there are all sorts of extra little checks and things you can build into this to make it less likely to give you nonsense, <laughs> if you will. Anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching. This is really quite hard to be honest. <laughs> Maybe we should have picked a road where the cars are not going so fast.